All right. So this is an image I captured on my phone in a resort I recently visited. Now I'll use this image to create a depth pass, which we will use as a displacement map in Blender. So here we are at huggingfaces.co and in spaces, if we search depth, we'll find all these depth map creators. So I'll choose this one. So let's upload our image and click on compute depth. So here is the depth map. This is a colored map. We can also download the grayscale depth map from here. So here is our grayscale depth map. Okay, in Blender, let's add a plane and let's subdivide it a few times. And let's add a subd modifier and a displacement modifier. Let's add some levels. And in displacement, add a new texture and select our image. I'll just rotate the UVs and in displacement modifier, I'll select the coordinates UV. Let's scale it and add few more levels. We can set the strength from here. All right. So here I have applied all the modifiers and deleted the side geometry, which is not useful. Now, if I go to edit mode, you can see that the vertices are stretched at these corners. However, I'm going to use it as a distant object. So this is fine for me. If you want further control, you can retopologize it. Okay, for texturing it, I'm using this rock material from Blender Kit as a base color. So this is how it looks with the base rock texture. Now I'm going to mix it with my original image. So I'll mix it with the base color. And I'll set the mixing mode to soft light. Now we can see some details. Okay. Now let's make those triangular pillars. So let's add a cylinder and reduce the vertices to 3. Let's scale it. Control A and apply scale and quickly UV it. So I'm just going to select both of these face edges and one of these vertical edges. Press U and mark seam. Press A, U and unwrap. So this is our UV. Now let's create a material for it. So let's add a wave texture and a color ramp. Let's plug it to our base color. And in wave texture, press Ctrl T to add a mapping and texture coordinate node. Let's add the UV output. Now let's increase the scale a bit and also increase this distortion. And now if I clamp the color ramp values, so you can play with these settings and get the desired shape. Once it is done, we'll bake it to an image texture. In the bake option, select bake type to be diffuse and deselect direct and indirect in contributions. So this is our baked texture and here I have blurred it a bit in Krita to use it as displacement texture. So now let's subdivide our mesh a little bit. Let's add a subd modifier and another displacement modifier. Let's increase the levels and click on a new texture and insert our image. In the displacement modifier, set the coordinates to UV. Let's decrease the strength. Okay, so here I have applied the modifiers. It's a high poly mesh now. 
and for the texture i use the same base rock texture and i have multiplied it with a bit of ambient occlusion To add the shatter effect to this face, I added a solidify modifier, gave it a little bit of thickness, selected the desired faces and separated them into a separate object and then used the cell fracture add-on. And then I move these parts out with proportional editing. Alright, now let's make that floating rock effect with geometry nodes. So here I have made some small rock pieces and put them in separate collection. Now let's add a curve. Scale it up and apply the scale and add a new geometry node setup. Now let's add a sample curve node and a set position node. Plug the position to the position and geometry to the curve. Now let's add points node and plug it to the geometry of set position. Now let's add Instance on point node, plug the geometry output to points, let's drag our rock collection, set it to separate children and reset children and plug it to instance. Finally, plug it to the output geometry. So here is our rock collection on the curve and if I move this spectra value, it moves on the curve. So let's set this spectra value. Let's add a math node and set it to fraction, duplicate it and set it to add. Now let's add a scene time node and a random value node. Let's add these two together, plug it to the fraction and finally plug the output to the factor. Now let's increase the point count. And in instant on point, select pick instance. Now if you press play, it will move. To control the speed of this movement, let's add another node after the scene time. Set it to divide. Now let's add another random value node. Set it to vector and plug it to the offset node. Now you can set the offset of these rocks from here. Alright, so this is the final scene. For lighting, I used this big area light in the top and for lower lighting I used smaller area lights with red color. I also added this noise kind of effect at the crack areas of the floor. For the fog I used principal volume node with a noise texture. I added another blue area light at the back of the face. 
to add a little bit of contrast. All right, so this is how I made this scene. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye bye.